Well, hello guys. My name is Ken Lawson, Renaissance man. I'll throw up my uh, background over here to the side so you can kind of see where I'm coming from. Today's little, you know, discussion, lesson, tutorial, whatever you want to call it, is about how to get the perfect layout every time for paintings and drawings. Now, um, what it doesn't tell you in my background is that I used to draw all the time growing up all the way through you know, till I was maybe 30 or so. But I had gotten away from drawing and painting for about 25 or 30 years. And then I got inspired and got back to it um, and found out that I was still right around where I left off, if not a little better, because I had become a Photoshop guy. Um, the main thing was the very first painting I did, I learned a lesson. Um, I've been laying things out in different ways forever. You know, when I started drawing, it was just doing it by eyeball. And then there was the little pencil method where you would, you know, kind of measure things that way. Then I went to the grid method. Um, then I went to making a light table so that I could trace things, but you know, you could only trace in the size that you had. Um, and back then, um, Printing to size was not as big a thing. <laughs> so, uh, when I came back to it, there were lots more options. And I have started to use them to the best of my ability. And they involve projectors and tracing. Uh, I see people doing the Loomis method, you know, is, is on there a lot. If you like that kind of thing, do that. But what I'm doing is appealing to those people who have, you know, they're good at the drawing part, the layout they're not so good at. And doing grid and all that is just a pain. Um, I'm not a fan of it because once you do the grid and once you get it all laid out, then you've got to erase all the lines you did your grid. Um, for a while I was using carbon paper uh, to lay down and go ahead and take the picture that I printed out to size and then do the carbon on top of that and you know doing that or trying to shine a light behind it so finally I settled on something easy quick and to where I can really lay things out the way that I want them and try different things this way you can try many different options now a lot of you might already use this um, I think it's good for anything from beginner to a working artist because, let's face it, if you're a working artist, you need to save time. Um, if you're a beginning artist, definitely practice, you know, drawing just by sight, you know. Um, do all those things if you want, but if you are really good at shading and all the other things, but you just keep finishing drawings and paintings and having them not quite centered or not quite right or the eye is a little bit lower and higher and you know there are so many issues you can run into that you really regret when you get to the end the first painting i did uh i'll put up on screen here um i went ahead and projected it onto the canvas because i used to use an overhead projector back in the day i used to actually make um, transparencies, put it on an overhead projector and then put it onto the canvas. Now I had a projector, you know, for my TV, I used that to do it onto the canvas. The problem was it wasn't perfectly at the right angle. So there was a little bit of warp to the image. And so I ended up with those issues. Uh, you know, I had, I'd never used a projector in that way. So, um, ran into issues. So I will show you the way that uh, I have begun to do it. I bought a projector on Amazon. It's a little tiny projector that sells for $40 and works really, really well. You can get really close to your canvas far away. It mounts on a tripod and you can get the angle to where you're not getting any kind of you know, fluctuation or anything like that. And I'll show you that in the demonstration coming up. Um, the other thing that I have gone to doing, and for smaller drawings, I do it on my computer monitor. 
for bigger drawings, if I've got, you know, uh, larger paper, I can, I use my TV. I'll kind of pan around my art room so you can see I've got four TVs. Well, two TVs in here, one long ways and one vertical over there in my painting station. Uh, I've got a monitor right next to my drawing station that I can bring up my references on so I don't have to print them anymore. Um, I also have a floating tablet. Let me get that. I also have this tablet here that can run off the computer, turn it whatever way. It just hooks up by USB or by a mini HDMI. So I have lots of options because I always hated having to print out a reference, you know, put it up on stuff next year or whatever. So I'm trying to streamline uh, cost of printing because you have to use ink. Um, and go ahead and make things as clean as possible. Now, uh, what I'm doing with the bigger ones is I put them up on my TV. And that way I can get it to the exact size by just bringing it up on the TV. I'll uh, show you that when I actually demonstrate how I do this. But you can put it on the TV, rotate it, do whatever you want to do. Although you don't need to rotate it because you can rotate paper. Um, resize it get it to exactly the layout that you want make sure that you're not shifted too much one way or the other and you're not going to have any warping because it's not projection you're flat against a screen and you don't have to push that hard so because depending on your level um people say that tracing is cheating uh, and projecting is cheating pretty much everything that you do that you're not just eyeballing it or using a grid is cheating I do not go along with that. Um, I've had too many drawings that along the way I was very happy with when I was done, but along the way of like a painting or whatever, I had to go in and move things that were already pretty much done or make shifts because the jaw was too out of place and all of this. And then sometimes the image would just be a little off. So if if you can save yourself the frustration of a badly laid out piece or even just a slightly off layout uh, because I've done a lot of portrait work and if you're off a little bit you're off. This method works great for that. It's very quick, has almost no cost and I think that you'll enjoy it. Um, I'll show you multiple, you know, trying to lay out multiple pictures and you'll get a gist of it really quickly. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the demonstration and I'll explain that as I go. So see you here in a moment. All right guys, so I've got a 56 inch screen and once you get the picture up on here, you can zoom and do whatever you need to. Here, let me look at what I'm doing. So you could zoom in, zoom out, whatever you want. Go a little smaller if you need to, a little bigger. But for now, we're going to leave it about here. So what I did was went ahead and um, up the ISO on the camera so that you can see what I'm doing so that the image shows through really clearly. And so obviously what we want to do first is decide if we want to go horizontal which actually kind of like that. Hmm. Originally I was going to go vertical and I thought somewhere right around, now I'm a big fan of getting the lines kind of coming across for flow in the picture. And at first I was thinking something along these lines, but now See, this is where it really gains you something to give you options to lay out and be able to see how it's going to look on the page. So if I was to go maybe here, I don't know how much I want to angle it. I think maybe about there. I mean, a vertical looks pretty good though. 
And then I would leave a little bit more up top, I think. You know what I think? I think we're going to zoom it out, or zoom it a little bit bigger. Let's go, I was on 67. This thing's really touchy. Let's go 74. And go... I think that's too close. Okay, 69. There we go. Ooh, I kind of like that. And then if I was to go this way, and see so when you're figuring the picture out, sometimes you just want to be able to see how it's going to look on the page. Okay, see if I do it this way, I don't get so much of the angles that I want. So what I'm going to do is probably go a little more like this, right about there, I think gives me a nice set of angles that I want. Okay, so while I'm there, I've got some tape. And what I'm using right now is some surgical tape because it lets go a little bit easier. And you don't need a lot. You just need enough to keep it up there long enough to draw. And you don't want it sticking to the paper, obviously. So there we go. I think I kind of like that layout. Let's see, this is where, once you lay it out on the paper, you're stuck with what you get. Now keep in mind that this uh, TV that's here is here strictly for my art room. Um, I'm not using it as my main TV to watch anything on. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here, get things set up so that you can see me drawing on this, and uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty guys, here we go. Using a 3H pencil because I don't want the lines too awful dark. Now, if you're one of these people who thinks of this as cheating, um, you can draw as much or as little as you want to get it laid out. For instance, if you just want to, you know, get the basic shapes in here, you can do that. And then you can think of it more as just a very, very light sketch. And of course, I'm not going to put a whole lot in here because I don't want to have to cover things up. But you want to have enough that you can catch all of the major, major blocks and areas. You know, at least get the basic shapes around. All right, and like up here at the eyebrow, just going to lightly draw in main shapes of the dark. And like I say, if you think of it as cheating, just do as little as you possibly can to get yourself laid out in the areas that you need. And that's what I'll do this time. Um, I would think if you go through and draw too much, then, then yeah, in a way, I wouldn't call it cheating, but I would call it shorting yourself on some of the actual drawing going on most important things on a portrait is lip and mouth placement because you hate to be drawing then find out you got the lips too big or too small right after you did all the detail work I'm gonna do just a tiny bit of shading right there just to kind of give us the feel of where that is And of course, all this is going on very, very light. And whatever you don't get put in there, obviously, that's what you eyeball, you know? And just give you an idea. There we go. See, I'm not really doing a whole lot, just enough to kind of get me in the ballpark. 
So I'll cut away and then I'll show you the finished after I'm done. All right, guys, so here's basically how it looks with the sketching. And let me see if I can zoom out. Hopefully it's staying in focus. Not a whole lot of details. Just enough to get me started of placement of things. Then, of course, all the actual drawing comes in next. And this is actually a little lighter than you can actually see it on here. It, it tended to bump up the contrast just a little bit. But anyway, and let's see how this tape comes off. Ah, perfect. No residue whatsoever. Because we didn't need the tape to be extra strong. Just enough to hold it in place while we did the sketch. And if you get... Like I say, this surgical tape seems to not leave any, any adhesive or residue or tear the paper at all. So... Let's move on to the projector. All right, guys, so we are to the projector portion of this and talking about the do's and don'ts and how to's of making the best layout without any distortions or anything from your projector. And I'll show you how I'm set up right at the moment, um, momentarily, because I want to show you how you need to position things in order to have them correct. Uh, when it comes to projector, again, it's just like with the uh, tracing on the TV. You're just us using it as a tool to get the best end product you can possibly get. But it doesn't mean that you're not an artist because you're not laying it out just by looking. It just means that you're trying to mitigate having a bad outcome by doing something up front just to get a general layout and size of everything. All right, so let me go ahead and show you how I'm set up here. Here's the projector I'm using. All right, now I've got an HDMI out and a power and computer down there on the floor. Right here, I've got it on a nice tripod. I mean, you know, not a nice, nice tripod, not like when I have my camera on, but I have a nice tripod that's sturdy enough to keep it nice and steady. And what you want to do is I have it at a height that is equal to the middle of the canvas. So you always want to center up on your canvas so that you are um, not getting any kind of distortion or warp. So that's what we're doing here. If I was to be working on a bigger canvas, I would just raise the tripod a little bit. And, you know, where you just always want it centered on the canvas. Now, if you have, let's say, for instance, I have this sitting pretty much straight up. All right. If you were to tilt it, All right, if you were to have it tilted like that, what you would want to do, you know, it's, it lets the painting sit there or the canvas sit there a little better. So what you would do then is raise your projector and angle it down to meet the tilt of the uh, canvas, if that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, you can say so in the comments and I will explain it further. But... Let me go ahead and show you why. So I'm bringing up the other camera now, and what I'm gonna show you is the difference in the picture between, okay, here is straight up. And this is going to be the, the best way to avoid any kind of warp or anything like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and lean it back and show you that if you were shooting with it in the same position with the projector, that if you lean it back, you're going to end up with the picture flaring out at the top and causing a warp. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Now I turned off the light behind it because I want to be able to lean this back and not have light on the canvas. 
but I'm going to exaggerate this and really lean it back. So here we are leaned back. I'll lean it back even more. There we go. Okay, now watch the size of the top of the head and where it sits on the canvas. And you'll see that the whole top of the head then becomes, um, okay. All right, so hopefully you were able to see that, that when I lean it back, the bottom stays as it is. The top of the head starts to flare out wider, and so you get a distortion. And that is the last thing you want. So no matter what you do, always make sure that the front of your projector is square with the front of your canvas and centered on the canvas. And that way you will always get the exact proportions that you want. Now, the cool thing about this is because I run it off of the TV. Um, that means that if you're watching the picture there on the canvas, that I can zoom in, zoom out, do whatever I want to do here. So there we go, and just go, okay, well, I think I want it to cover more of the canvas. Then you can adjust your projector to adjust the image on there. Let me bring up a different idea and a different setting. All right, so what I've done now, um, I didn't have it on the whole time I was moving things. Uh, since we're going horizontal now, I've gone ahead and moved my projector a little bit closer uh, because there is no zoom feature on this. I mean, it is a $40 projector. You're not going to have zoom in and out on a $40 projector that's worth a damn. I mean, you know, that does a good image. I just went ahead and moved the projector forward and now it's in position that I can go and zoom in, zoom out, whatever I feel like doing, move it side to side. Of course, you know, not the best picture for that, but if I wanted to get like, say, here, and then I could just go ahead and adjust the image to sit where I want it to sit. Let's go to a different picture. Okay, here we go. This is another one I took out of the zoo. Um, so what I do, just drag that side out. Go ahead and adjust my projector a little bit to where it's straight. There we go, and then just zoom in a little bit. All right, and there we go. Now we have our next layout. And all you got to do is just draw, you know, where the position is of the major pieces and where the heron is is sitting. If it's a heron, I'm pretty sure it's a heron. Um, and then another example. All right, another one I was working on. So let's see if we can zoom out on this. There we go, see? Any size that you want. Let's go ahead and size it appropriately. Get it close, then set the projector how you want it. So I would think right about here. There we go. And now if you notice, you can check out your diagonals and things like that and decide, well, I need to have her closer over here. I'll have to extend the background, but at least that'll work. But you can try it out and be able to see how it's going to look on your canvas as you go. Um, if you were to do, let's say, like this one here. It's just one that I did in the computer. All right. So here I could zoom in, bring that down, bring it over. Let me see, we can move it up or down, however works. So, there you go. There's not a whole lot to this. The main thing to focus on is just how you position the projector as opposed to the canvas so that you make sure that you're not, you know, getting it um, with a bit of warp in it. Let me show you one more. I'll do another vertical. All right, and here is the last one. Um, this is one I'm actually going to be painting soon, I believe. 
and it just will give you a better idea of how things can go and let's say I just wanted to be I don't know for it to look more intimate let's say in a way not the right choice of word but I think you know what I'm looking for now we could just size it how we want and we're all good there we go so anyway that's where we're at all right guys so there we are there's a little demonstration on how you can go about laying out your uh, paintings and drawings to you know just kind of make them easier less time spent just you know trying to get them proportionate figure out all the dimensions and all that just do it quickly go ahead and get yourself laid out so that you can go ahead and just start drawing because really that's what we all want to do right um the reason that you do the drawings, you know, the paper on the TV and the paintings over there with the projector is obviously you can't shine through the back of the canvas in the same way, especially if you were using canvas board or something like that. You can't, you know, rear project it. So you have to use the projector in that, in that particular case if you don't want to do all those other methods of Loomis or grid or any of those other things just go ahead and get your painting up there get it laid out as basic or as detailed as you want and then just start painting um, I think that hopefully this will help you in some way if it does please leave a comment down below after you've tried it out uh, you don't have to have the little pad that I showed you you can just have a monitor you can print out your references I just prefer to have a lot of monitors in my room so that I have access to them and don't have to waste ink and paper printing out references. It's just a preference of mine. A reference preference, you could say. So, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you have a lot of luck with it. Like I say, really pay attention if you're using the projector on making sure that you are centered you know that the projector is centered to the height of your canvas that you're going on and that the canvas is flat facing in front of your projector and not leaning one way or the other it's a crucial part of getting that right on the tv of course you don't have to worry about it because it's flat alrighty um enjoy and uh like and subscribe if this helped you in any way and I will be posting some of my own paintings and drawings because I'm moving along. So little of this, little of that, all the other things that I do. And I will see you next time. You have great creativity and a great life. Bye.